Super Mario 3D All-Stars has given me a chance to replay my favorite 3D Mario titles and specifically Super Mario Sunshine has been a roller coaster when it comes to my opinion of it. The bosses in the game especially. Bosses in this game are different when comparing it to Super Mario 64. For instance, there are so much more bosses to face and you sometimes face the same boss multiple times, which is kind of the similar theme in Super Mario 64, but this one takes it to another level. This video will go over each boss of the game and I will be ranking them based on the uniqueness of the fight as well as how enjoyable it was to face them. If a boss is faced multiple times, each time will be counted as a separate boss and will be compared to their previous encounters and future encounters as well. So make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to be notified when more of these ranking videos come out. My name is Junior Leva aka Mr. Awesome and here are the Super Mario Sunshine boss rankings. Let's get the show on the road. I'm gonna be real with you, I have no idea what Nintendo was trying to accomplish with this boss. Like, like there's a whole lot of something going on when in reality there is nothing going on. Uh, Monty Mole is one of those bosses that you don't really consider a boss? Uh, it stands in your way and has a cutscene during its death, so I guess that qualifies him to be on this list. Um, I don't know, I saw a video on YouTube say that he was a boss, and I saw a bunch of wiki say he was a boss, so... I had to count him as a boss, cause you know, majority rules I guess. You first face off Monty Mole in Peanut Park, minding his own business, up until you come along, you know, you, Super Mario. <laughs> And the Monty Mole shoots a barrage of bullets at you, which I guess could be considered as a threat. And the only way to beat him is wait for him to send out one of these ticking bombs and shoot the bomb with water and throw it back at the boss. Why not just let me catch the damn thing and throw it back? Why does water have to do anything with this? I get the whole gameplay mechanic with Flood is water and stuff, but if you throw water at a bomb, it ain't gonna take down, it's most likely gonna defuse or go boom. You'll notice that a trend with Super Mario Sunshine to beating these bosses is, uh, you know, just just to make them wet. That's what she said. I'll be super honest, Monty Mo is more of a more of a nuisance than it actually being a boss. I would honestly categorize him as a mini boss. But if the Super Mario Wiki says he's a boss, then I guess it's true. Super Mario Wiki is the holy bible of Mario stuff. You don't even get anything for beating the boss. No shine sprite, just access to the actual level itself. So Thank you for wasting my time, Monty Mo. Uh we could have done better things with our life, but hey, we just had a rendezvous like this. Again? Yo, what the fuck are you doing here? Bro, no one fucking likes you. Get the fuck out of here. Ah, Monty Mo's second battle is exactly like the first one, but this time he's located in Noki Bay. So there's that. The only reason this battle is higher than the first battle is because it can be slightly harder to get to him due to the paint being slippery and you gotta look out for other objects in the way while you're making your way up to him. Other than those differences, it's just the same as a previous battle and to be honest, it's a lot easier. But at least this one had a purpose because once you defeat him, one, he's gone for good and two, he actually gives you a shine sprite. So automatically to me, Monty Mole 2 is better than Monty Mole 1. Paluta Piranha is the first boss you face in Super Mario Sunshine. This is right after you're being introduced to Flood, which is a good way to start off the game in my opinion. It's pretty much a tutorial boss showing you the tried and true Nintendo boss specialty. There's not much to expect from this boss, which is why he's higher than the Monty Mo bosses from Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, I don't expect something crazy fun and complicated out of the first boss, cause you know, it's the first boss, you know, so it's just supposed to handhold you. Say hey, it's like it's like when you're fighting a little kid play fight. Hey, your your attacks hurt. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh... Defeating the polluted piranha gives you the very first shine sprite in the game. The second boss fight of polluted piranha is a reminder of the basics in case you somehow forgot. Keep in mind, this is a Nintendo game after all gonna hold your hand through thick and thin. The only difference between this boss fight and the previous one is that the new one introduces the slime enemies, which you know they make these wonderful sounds when they're trying to attack you. This now becomes training for you 
to be able to multitask and keep an eye out for add-on enemies while fighting. Defeating this boss doesn't give you a shine sprite, but it's almost like the game is telling you, Hey, you can go now. You're on your own from here on out. You've gotten pretty big. In the arms of an angel. Are you fucking kidding me? The Polluter Piranha 4th fight is located on Delfino Plaza again? And this one apparently likes to just play jokes on you. It pretends to be dead after its first three hits, but then, oh no, it gets, it gets back up for more. And then it's dead. Because I fucking murdered it. Yo. If I seriously have to fight another one of these motherfucking polluted piranhas, I'm gonna fucking flip a lid, man. I'm so sick of looking at you stupid, slimy face, ugly fucks. The fifth polluted piranha battle is the final battle of the polluted piranhas chronologically, but thank God it's over and done with because this became excessive. This one seemed a bit harder to face off, but it could just be my imagination. It's not like they would ever change the entire moveset of a boss you had to face off five times, right? Oh, hey. Polluted Piranha. Who would've thought? Huh. <sighs> Let's just get this over with, man. I got a dentist appointment in an hour. At least the third polluted piranha fight has the audacity to give you an obstacle course that leads you up to him. At least this boss has some presentation to him. Hey, uh, I just made you go through the obstacle course and you could have died at any moment, but uh, well, here I am, man. This is what you get. And now he'll no longer be part of this list ever again. Oh, and he gives me a shine sprite too. And access to the rest of the world. Best polluted piranha fight? I agree. Moving on to a fresh boss, we have Goober Blooper located in Rico Harbor. His appearance is a fresh new take on bosses with a cutscene included as opposed to Polluted Piranha. Where it's just... Okay, I'm here now. To fight this boss, the goal is to pull on its mouth. But he can occasionally block his face with his... Tentacles. And if they bother you, you can just ground pound them and pull on them until they finally... Ew. Goober Blooper's ink can make the floor slippery, which will make moving around difficult, but overall, he's not a tough boss, it's definitely a memorable one for sure. Oh great, he's back again. The second Goober Blooper fight, again, is in Rico Harbor, and this time, he's back with a vengeance. He trained extremely hard for this, with a whole new approach with a new ultimate move. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding, it's the fucking same as before. Ew. I like this battle over the first one simply because of the location of the battle. It made the boss fight much more fun than the first one, and I kinda got to, you know, show off a little bit of my moves while, you know, trying to get to this boss flex a little bit. Look, he's here again, and this time he brought his little squid army with him. The third Gooper Blooper battle is located in Noki Bay. He's in a whole new part of Isle Delfino, and he's trying to act brand new too. It's like when you go to college and you see that friend you grew up with and they don't want to see you, and then you call him out and be like, yo, you fake as fact for this. That's Gooper Blooper number three with his whole new posse. His new little squid army poses absolutely no threat whatsoever. Fun fact. When I was playing this game for the first time as an adult, I managed to avoid this boss. So when I live streamed this game, I was taught how to perform a glitch to skip the entire boss. And to be honest, I had no idea this boss existed in the first place because the glitch, as you can see on screen, um, it just 
you legit just clip through and skip through everything. So I had no idea this Shine Sprite had a Gooper Blooper fight. But I'll be honest with you, this is easily the best Blooper fight out of the three of them. And it's so nice to see that they made the last fight mean so much more than the previous ones. Yo, this dude is just chilling. You're telling me I have to fight him? Why? My dude is just vibing out. Look at him. Let him vibe out with me. I'm pretty tired too. Brute, I'd be freaking tired if I was carrying a backpack full of water all day. I'm not no water boy. The second PD Piranha fight makes you use these puffer blob things to wake him up. And honestly, I don't understand why I have to wake him up in the first place. Uh, he's not hurting anyone to my knowledge. Is he really the villain or am I really the villain? Maybe I as Mario should have just stayed in jail since I want to be a deck to other creatures that are honestly just chilling. Half of Bianco Hills is a battleground for this boss, so I found that pretty cool. He flies around spewing this icky paint like goo. Doing this summons the small blobs with that oh. sound, but I wouldn't worry too much about them. Yeah, they can cause a real threat, but the real threat in this game is honestly in his Super Mario 3D All-Stars version with the frustrating camera controls. He's flying in the air in this fight, so you have to shoot him down in order to get a hit on him. The fight can be repetitive sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, but once he's out of the sky, it's just like the first PD Piranha fight. Just fill up his belly with water until his outer belly button pokes out and give him a good pounding until he's no more. Murder innocent creatures. Achieve Shine Sprites. Mario. Ah, uh, King Boo looks so derpy in this game. Honestly, I can't take him seriously at all, especially compared to Luigi's Mansion's King Boo. This King Boo is located in the casino part of the hotel in Serena Beach. And I'm not gonna lie to you, back then, I used to hate this boss. If I had made this list years ago, or a few days ago before I actually played it again, I would have put King Boo at the absolute bottom of this list. But I'm an adult now. I have grown up into a more mature person, especially three years ago. I no longer play Mario, I analyze Mario. Nay, I am Mario. I now understand what you have to do in order to beat him. So he's not much of a threat to me as he used to be. But I'm not gonna sit here and BS you. I still think he's a pretty broken boss because I would throw a red hot chili pepper at him and nothing would happen. But overall, he's a pretty good boss once you get the hang of it. I mean, to be honest, it kind of changed my uh, perspective on Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, maybe not as a whole, but it kind of made me want to 100% this game and get all the blue coins in order to have a final opinion of Super Mario Sunshine. So someday I will most likely stream me 100%ing Super Mario Sunshine. So until then, subscribe and be on the lookout for more Super Mario Sunshine content. Mario Stand, I mean Mario Shadow, is a slippery bastard appears often in this game. For this specific one, I know the rules were before, hey, multiple encounters, this and that. This whole list would have been fucking Shadow Mario 1, 2, 1 through fucking 8. I decided to put Shadow Mario as one boss in this game since he it does exactly the same thing every time. The only notable thing is that in the first one, he has Peach with him. So you chase him around spraying water at him like he's your neighborhood friend in the middle of the summer. And when you two lovebirds are done spraying with each other, he leaves you and goes to play somewhere else. The first chase is the best in my opinion. And this is because you get used to running around spraying water instead of standing still. And you also happen to rescue Peach, as I mentioned before, from getting kidnapped. And you get this badass cutscene when he emerges. At this sunshine ranking, we have... You're the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. Where does your face start? Where does your face end? Why do you only have a few number of teeth? Forget Dr. Mario, someone called Dentist Mario in here. When I started to stream this game, I started to appreciate this boss a lot more from when I was a kid, because when I was a kid, one, brushing your teeth was the big nasty, and two, this fight was annoying. It's crazy how some of the bosses from Super Mario Sunshine, I used to this like years ago, are so high up this list now. This boss is somewhat difficult since you have to constantly worry about air, which will kill you if you're not careful. And in order for you to beat this boss, you have to clean his teeth out with water. Uh, someone needs to explain the logic of how spraying water suddenly makes his teeth clean 
when we're already submerged in water during this fight? Is flood water special water? Kinda need answers or else I won't be able to sleep at night. Some of his teeth is easier to get to while others can be really hard to clean for some reason. For some reason though, this boss fight feels really rewarding to beat. It might just be because the amount of focus needed in order to beat him, plus Flood telling you the importance of washing your teeth is a little nice addition to the charm of this game, so I would highly suggest brushing your teeth. The first PD Piranha fight is probably one of the most memorable fights in Super Mario Sunshine. Ah! I'm stand corrected, it is probably one of the most memorable fights in Super Mario, period. You take the Bond. Now you take the water. It's a giant plant boss. This is PD Piranha's first appearance in any game, and it has made its way into other games as well, so you know what? Nintendo did something right when making this boss. Out of the horrible garbage that Super Mario Sunshine is, PD Piranha is one of the best things that came out of this game. I am playing Super Mario Sunshine is not garbage, please don't crucify me in the comments. It was also fun seeing the cutscene of when Mario arrives and the roof just caves in from his massive weight, and I guess apparently Mario's massive weight too. I think I fucked up. Yeah, you you fucked up. You have to fill up Petey's belly with water until he can't take it no more. Once he falls on his back, ground pound him to flatten him. Repeat these three times in order to win, and the shine sprite's yours. This fight is better than the second fight mainly because he doesn't fly around in this one, so it's not annoying to fight him. Especially if you're playing the 3D All-Stars version of this game, cause god those camera controls are garbage. The final boss is not at the number one spot? That's unheard of. Not at the Mr. Awesome channel. Subscribe for more boss ranking videos. Bowser and Bowser Jr. is such a weird fight. I didn't include the trip inside Corona Mountain to give this a fair ranking because if I would have put that, this boss would have been at the very bottom of the list. It would have been this and then King Boo, but I digress. Honestly, as a kid, I never beat Super Mario Sunshine, so when I found out that this was the final boss, it is something I would have never imagined. For starters, you're in this hot tub with Bowser, and for one, he's fucking massive. And once he's defeated, he somehow becomes smaller. So I'm not even going to question the logic on this one. I'm just going to keep on going. So in order to beat this boss, uh, you got to break the hot tub with... Mario's butt. Bowser may be huge, but nothing will ever match the thickness of Mario. Bowser Jr. is floating around in his little floaty thing, throwing bullet bills, and honestly, I, I could care less. Uh, I did a playthrough recently, and so my most recent playthrough for this very specific video, I didn't want to deal with Corona Mountain, so I put a low gravity cheat, and uh, besides the boss itself being super overwhelming, it's a good boss fight. Bowser really does pose a threat with his flamethrower, and the bullet bills kind of do damage. But with this whole low gravity cheat, um, <laughs> it was kind of easy to fight this boss, but you gotta see what happened at the end, because God was with me with this one. Uh, I, I kind of broke through the ceiling of the game. I can't believe I ranked this Hungry Caterpillar so high on this list, especially for the Super Mario Sunshine portion. I hope I don't get so much hate out of you guys, but honestly, this regular fight is so damn fun. I honestly, I just can't help it. It's just so much fun to me, man, especially because I have I built such a nastiness to playing Super Mario Sunshine. Like, I find myself pretty good playing Super Mario Sunshine. Like, I know all these games, like, ins and outs in a way, not really, but in a way. And like, these bosses bro, these are just speedrun levels of entertainment. So in this fight, you have to avoid the, the angry wiggler and you gotta water these plants so that they form this sand pyramid. And once the sand structure is up, if he so happens to be around that sand structure, he trips and tips over. So at this point, you gotta ground pound on him to do some damage and do it over again a few times. And honestly, I can't help but laugh at looking at his angry face. The more you hit the boss, the faster it gets, and it brings up the difficulty slightly each time. He's definitely a boss I revisit from time to time again personally. Alright, so I'm going to be honest with you guys. Mecha Bowser used to be my number one favorite boss in Super Mario Sunshine. Unfortunately, 
for the Super Mario Sunshine portion of this list, he was put at a lower ranking as I got older. This was the fight that introduced Bowser Jr., a character that would soon to be Bowser's official partner in crime. It has an incredible cutscene and you do the fight on a fucking roller coaster, my boys. I'm actually huge fans of roller coaster in real life, so if you look at my Instagram, there's a lot of uh, roller coaster pictures of me and my friends, so. Sorry if this ranking is a little biased, but I got we all gotta admit this boss fight is really fun because of this roller coaster. The fight is so unique. It's such a huge change compared to all the other fights we've been facing, especially in Super Mario history. I mean you have to aim these rockets at Mecha Bowser for massive damage. And what made it so better is that this game never implied Bowser's appearance until this very boss fight. It's a surprise that we should have expected because from the very beginning of the game up until the moment you meet Mecha Bowser, Bowser's not even mentioned at any point. To top it off, once you beat Mecha Bowser, you get to experience the biggest plot twist of them all. Mama Peach, I'm your mama? Seven to eight year old me had his entire mind blown when I first witnessed this cutscene. And to be honest, YouTube wasn't really a thing for me back when I was a kid. I wasn't fortunate enough to be like you young kids. I would boot up Super Mario Sunshine over and over just for that cutscene. Every friend that came over to my house, I would play this fight just to show them that cutscene because no one believed me that was Mama Peach. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. At number one, we have Phantom Manta. It's crazy because again, I hated this boss as a kid. And... <laughs> It's such an amazing fight, and as someone that's played Sunshine so many times, it was a blast to face off against. It can be done super quick if you know what to do, and there's a lot of ways to use Flood in this one. You know, you ordinarily shoot water, but knowing which way to shoot the water, and which way could be the most optimal way to do it determines how, how fast you could beat this boss. The spin jump spray is honestly one of the best moves to use on this fight because when there's a little phantom ants is going around, you can legit get them all 360 no scope. And also this little, the, the blast spray is really dope when the big one comes in and you just want to take care of it real quick and divide it up. It, this boss fight, it, it brings the inner speedrunner Mario out of me. And I mean, this fight uses the entire Serena Beach area, which is something that's never done in any of these previous boss fights. Yeah, Pavey Piranha 2 used up some part of Bianco Hills, but not the entire freaking map. And granted, yeah, you know, Serena Beach isn't as big as Bianco Hills, but still. This boss fight is just amazing, man. Like, it is a, it's a genuine threat, what's amazing to me too, because the hotel owner's like, yo, I kind of need your help with this one. And mind you, the hotel owner's a dick, bro. First of all, fuck that guy in his hotel. And second of all, fuck these two people too, over here blaming my ass, over here trying to make me do work that I have nothing to be part of. And <laughs> what I find cool is that for Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Japan even made a commercial about this fight and showing how it could be tedious. And honestly, it is. It is very tedious if you don't know what's up, but if you do know what's up, it's really fun. Honestly, this boss fight is well worth the time spent, and it's so rewarding to beat that I personally really like to come back and play it. Phantom Manta takes the number one spot in the Super Mario Sunshine portion of this list for its uniqueness and for being the most enjoyable Sunshine boss fight of them all. Alright, thank you guys for watching this ranking video. For those of you that reached the end, let me ask you. What's your boss ranking for Super Mario Sunshine? Your list has to be different than mine because my list is it's more of coming to terms with Super Mario Sunshine and appreciating what it is. But I definitely want to hear what's your list down below. A huge thanks to my members. If it wasn't for you guys, honestly, I wouldn't get this new equipment I have. And you guys honestly keep the lights on in this house. And you guys help me pay Zabre, so thank you. And for those lovely people wearing the Mr. Awesome merch, you guys are very awesome. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to get your very own Mr. Awesome merchandise down below to be featured here. And as always, stay golden. And please, wash your hands. Because clean is better than dirty, and dirty is better than clean.